Hey everybody, let me turn the 10 meter rig down here. I was at a ham fest over the weekend and uh, it was kind of small, but good time. Beautiful weather. The only thing I found worth buying were a couple of these uh, 65 megahertz, uh, six digit programmable frequency counters. And yesterday I was kind of bored, so I went through my stash. I found a die cast box, an aluminum die cast box. Um, and I put one of the counters, one of the two that I bought, um, into this little box. And I didn't have all the right tools. The rectangular cutout, there's some goofs in it, you can see. I didn't have the right jigsaw blade, and this material's too thick to use uh, my little uh, nipper on, nibbling tool. But it turned out okay for what I want to use it for. So anyway, here's the scoop. Uh, it's pretty cool little thing. Let me disconnect this for a second and show you the back. Get this one out of the way. There's a couple of programming switches there. There's one for two different IFs. Um, and I'll show you about that later. But it's pretty simple. And these things are pretty accurate. I've got a bunch of them, by the way. There's two of them there that I've used. The top one I use with my HW16 uh, VFO, actually, the HG10. I got one on my uh, R4B. And uh, I have these two that I just purchased, and I found I already had a one in a drawer. They come in three different colors, by the way blue, red, and green. So hang on a second. Okay, so I got my signal generator set for uh, 7.1 megahertz, roughly. It's a little bit off. I don't know if it's the counter or the... I think it's the signal generator. It's pretty sensitive too. It'll lock up on a, uh, on a 50 millivolt signal, at least down at this frequency range. Now if I... Uh, so this is the frequency counter mode for just general messing around. I have this one programmed f if I go to the second IF for a 455 kilohertz IF on a short wave receiver. So you see it automatically makes the calculation uh, for me. And I can either do plus 455 like in this case or minus 455 kilohertz. And uh, so by manipulating these switches back here according to the documentation that's available you can uh, you can figure out how to do that pretty easily it's pretty intuitive actually and if you want to mess with them they're only ten bucks a piece might be a little bit more now but they're uh, if you look up a PLJ-6 LED you'll find all kinds of information on it and uh, they used to be available from Marlon P. Jones I think they probably still are Okay, let me pop the cover real quick and show you the innards. Okay, <clears throat> this is what it looks on the in looks like on the inside. Hang on a second. Let me disconnect that. <clears throat> so you can see the offset uh, program with no input it just shows up as 455 kilohertz. Uh, or I can flip that switch and make it into the frequency counter mode. But that's all there is to it. Pretty simple. All I had to do is add a couple of switches and a, uh, a header here uh, for that uh, connector in the middle to toggle between the two different IF modes. A little feed through capacitor here probably really isn't necessary. I mean, there's a big hole in the front of the case anyway, so, you know, so much for 100% shielding. But uh, anyway, that's it. Pretty simple little thing and very, very useful. So that's, uh, that's how I spent part of the day yesterday. These die cast boxes are real nice, but man, they're 80 thousandths thick. And even though it is aluminum, um, of course, I was trying to use a jigsaw with a, with a, uh, like a plywood blade on it, not a metal blade. <laughs> I didn't feel like going to this store, so. That's my fault, but it'll be good enough for me. Keep on tinkering, everybody. We'll see you all later.